back to BZR Radio with Matt Boone and Ryan Clark for hour number two. We're going to be taking your live phone calls. We've got our live chat room on and pop at WZRonline.com slash chat. Once again, WZRonline.com slash chat. Matt B, hour number two, man. We've got uh, a lot of news, rumors. Uh, it's been a pretty busy past week. It's only going to get busier, especially next week with... Uh, WrestleMania coming up, that's when you really start to feel the WrestleMania hype, when they start doing the access stuff and, and that whole week-long build where next week, with all the reports that we constantly get from, uh, you know, from Arizona where it is. Yeah, there's crap every day with that shit, but uh, usually every year I'm, I'm looking more forward to the Hall of Fame than WrestleMania. Right. I actually keep forgetting about the Hall of Fame. Like you just brought up all the weekend stuff, and I was like, oh yeah, the Hall of Fame. Oh, I don't even really care about the Hall of Fame this year. There's not any there's not any people that I'm dying to see, you know, speak. And most of the really good ones they got are dead, you know. Well, I guess you know, I guess Million Dollar Man will be good. I don't know. They announced, uh, I mean, Ted DiBiase they announced fairly early on. And obviously they couldn't have done Stu Hart any earlier than last night because of the ongoing storyline with Brett and, and Vince, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it just seems like, you're right, it doesn't have that mega name. And I know that they had tried to get the Ultimate Warrior to uh, to come in and, and do something, but there was a problem where they wanted him. It's basically, if you do the Hall of Fame, they'll give you, you know, you get your ring, you'll get a, a decent paycheck. And I think, actually, it's not a decent paycheck. I think they only give those guys like five grand or something to come in and accept. Don't you get like a contract where you can't, com- no, uh, with a no compete, if you get into the Hall yeah, of Fame for like three yeah. months or six months or something? It's such a cheesy deal. You know, where you get like you get like a five thousand dollar check from them, you get your ring, you get the induction, da 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 da. da. But there's also that no compete, and Warrior wanted to try to work around that. And apparently, we would have, you know, if they had. Because you got to explain to the people that don't know what a no compete is completely. It doesn't really. It doesn't just mean you can't go to TNA. That means you can't go do personal appearances, autographs. Yeah. You can't do none of that shit. And yeah, a lot of people can. live off of their past fame in wrestling. You know, you can't take that away from them. With one yeah, you know, it, it really depends on, I mean, look at a guy like Tommy Dreamer who has a no-compete. A lot of times the no-compete clause where Tommy Dreamer, I use him as an example because he's out there right now working for indie promotions. He worked Evolve a couple weeks ago. I believe the no-compete has something to do with for, you know, television purposes where if you're on another network or if it's something for a DVD, anything that's going to be out on on shelves where people can witness it on TV. I believe indie, I mean, certain guys have different no-compete clauses, but guys like, I mean, the Tommy Dreamer deal where he's out working Evolve, but they're not making, they're not making DVDs out of the shows where, or if they are, they're editing his part. I was gonna say, uh, uh, they would probably be taping stuff for DVDs, I would think, because that's the whole. That's isn't it Gabe Sapolsky's thing? He, that's what he. Well, they could right? do it. I mean, they could do it. I mean, obviously, the DVD is not going to come out for months, months after the fact, and by that time, you know, it'll be, it'll uh, the no compete clause will have expired. So yeah, but the, so you're allowed to tape TV. You just can't be on live. I, 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 I have no I'm idea not, how it works, yeah, honestly. I, I didn't even know Tommy Dreamer was out working. And speaking you know, of Evolve, what the hell happened to? <laughs> That was like going to be the new Ring of Honor. Nobody gives a sh- nobody says a word about Evolve anymore. I haven't heard a peep about it. Oh my god, dude! They had a show. I think it was was it last weekend where the storm was in New York City or down in New Jersey or something. And they drew like a hundred or a hundred and fifty fans or something like that. I think that was the hope because you had Gabe Sapolsky, who was the former booker of Ring of Honor, and a lot of people loved his work. And when he was released from the company, a lot of Ring of Honor diehards were pissed off. And basically, I think his hope was he's got a lot of followers, and if he opens up a new company, these diehard Ring of Honor fans are going to follow him wherever he, wherever he goes. You know what I mean? And he's, he's a good booker. That's uh, retarded. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, he's got. I mean, for guys that like the indie the indie scene, he's got a good list of talent for Evolve. You know what I mean? It's just. He's got I mean, there's a, no stars that'll sell tickets, and he has no way to promote the shows other than the internet and. You're only going to get local. You could have like let's say he's got just to throw a number out, and it's probably and not. It's obviously completely wrong. Let's say he's got a hundred thousand diehard followers, like you said, right? All, but they're all on the internet. You promote a show in say New Jersey somewhere. 
The only right. people you're going to get off the Internet are people that are in that area. They're not going to travel from California to New Jersey just because he's a great yeah, indie booker, you know. I think I think his hope was, all right, Ring of Honor goes down and they run the Manhattan Center and they draw 1,200 fans. Out of those 1,200 fans, maybe I can get 600 or 500 of them to come to my show. Well, the and other all, thing with Ring of Honor was that they built their company up with DVDs, so that was an international audience. And then, you know, they built the brand up, Ring of Honor. Evolve right. is not a... It's not a brand yet. Nobody knows what the hell Evolve is, you know, so yeah. it's, 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 it's not the same, really. Yeah, it's, I mean, he's trying. you got to give the guy credit for trying, but 100, 120 fans or something, the report that I read is just, I mean, that's brutal, you know. I know it's depressing, man. <laughs> yeah, it is depressing. They're all putting their tape on their wrists backstage, getting their boots laced up, and then they come out, and it's like a bomb scare <laughs> worth a crowd, you know. <laughs> Oh, it's so horrible. Hey, uh, before we went to the break, man, um, I had some news on Tommy Dreamer. There's an interview that I'm going to post he, um, as soon as we go off the air here. He did an interview with the Poughkeepsie Journal, and uh, basically they asked him what he was going to do next. And he says, here's a quote from him. He says, I have been contacted by TNA. May go there. If not, I'm very, very happy and content. I'm seriously working every weekend up until right now to September straight. I did two movies. I've been writing two films that I'm hoping to get sold. I, it wasn't just a spur of the moment thing. I've been working on this for quite some time. So basically, that first line there where he says, I have been contacted by TNA, may go there. That seems to me like he'll be there sooner than later as soon as his no compete clause is up. That's another example of what we just talked about where he says, He's been working every weekend, and he's booked until September, yet he has a no-compete clause, you know what I mean? So he can't go to TNA, but he can go and do indie projects, you know what I mean? So I'm not exactly sure how that how that works. I didn't think he could do indie, so that's surprising to me. But Well, maybe he's got, maybe he's got, uh, I didn't think he could do indies either, so maybe he's got something, you know, he left on good. Or you know what, didn't his contract expire? Maybe if your contract expires, he doesn't have a no-compete. No, that's right? why. That's why. That's why they give you the no compete is for when your contract expires, no, or if they fire you, or if you quit. Well, I mean, right. it's, if it's, if you leave the company on any on any terms, you have a contract that says, okay, you, you know, we, they either let you out of your contract by letting you quit, or they right. fire you so you're out of your contract. But either way, you, you got the no compete. But that's if this contract is. Well, I think if his contract is up, he's no longer under contract with WWE. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah, that's right. probably true. Firing and quitting, I would think, no compete applies because yeah, you're yeah. getting out of your contract, but you still got to honor the, uh, the no compete right. because that's you know that's on the way out. But yeah, I guess right. if it expires, then you know, yeah, true. Yeah, if it, if, if, if well, then if that's the case, why can't he go to TNA right now? Well, sure he doesn't. So he has no no compete at all. So that that's the story. Well, maybe maybe he's just doing other. Yeah, he's probably <laughs> gotten. I mean, if his contract, I'm going to say if his contract expired, he's got no compete, and he can go to TNA right now if he wanted to. But if you get fired from the company, you've obviously got a no compete clause where you can't work anywhere for 90 days. You know. Yeah. You never finished Raw, by the way. But what what was the story with the? I don't even know how to say his name. The football player Sean Merriman. He posted like a Twitter thing saying he's going to be at Raw, and he wanted the microphone and blah blah blah. He, he wasn't even there, was he? Yeah, well, they did a uh, they did a thing. NBC Sports. Um, they posted an article yesterday that he, you know, he had a Twitter message up, like he said, where he said he was going to be at Monday Night Raw, wanted the mic, and uh, they never showed him. They didn't even show. Yeah, him I thought they would at least have him. Yeah, I thought they would have him in the audience and say, you know, San Diego's own, you know, whatever. But they didn't even do that. So yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the deal was. I can. Uh, I got an exclusive for you guys, Candice Michelle. Who's uh, currently pregnant? She's uh, she's backstage at the SmackDown tapings. I put that up on the website earlier today. She's just there uh, visiting friends, things like that. So it's just a little tidbit. Who cares, right? Nobody but, cares. Yeah, I know, but nonetheless, she's there. Um, I guess we'll. I mean, we'll just talk about news and rumors. We're gonna take some live phone calls as well. I guess we'll give out the number now. If you want to call up, ask us anything. Wrestling, MMA, UFC, whatever you want to talk about, give us a call at 518-712-3070. Once again, 518-712-3070. And we've got our live chat room at wzronline.com slash chat. Once again, wzronline.com slash chat. We'll do some chat shout-outs here in just a little bit. Hey, did, oh, I tell you I got, did, did I tell you I got my Ring of Honor? I bought uh, Ring of Honor tickets for... I believe it's May 8th, and then after I bought them, there's a UFC show. I'm hoping that that's not the uh, the show that goes, because Strikeforce and UFC are going to go head-to-head, right? Um, I don't know. 
which weekend is it for? Do you know the date? I think it's May 8th. May 8th, I believe. May 8th, is, it's not the uh, next UFC pay-per-view, because this Sunday is the UFC versus the next Saturday is the UFC pay-per-view with George St. Pierre and Frank Mears fights. Um, what is the next pay-per-view? Oh, I think that's Abu Dhabi, right, with uh, Lyoto versus Shogun. And Kimbo, no. yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, and Kimbo's uh, fight. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so that's the one that I'm going to miss, man. I'm going to be taking the train down to New York City again. for. Right I wonder now. how that works, though, because they're in Abu Dhabi for that pay-per-view. I don't know what the time difference is. That might actually air during the day. I didn't know that was a taped show. Wow, yeah. So that's well, I don't know, know if it's going to be taped or not. That's what I'm saying, because like, even they went yeah. to Australia recently, and they just had it really early in the morning instead of putting it on at normal time for Australian uh, you know, for Australia, and then airing it on delay here. They, they aired it really late there so that it could air live here. So right. I don't know if they're going to do that in Abu Dhabi or if they're going to do what they do when they go to England and just air it during the day and at night. I don't know. Well, they were doing prelims at, like, shoot, dude. It was, like, 9 o'clock in the morning, 8 o'clock in the morning for the uh, UFC show that 